Hi, today I will show you how to create this text effect. Usually custom type pieces like this would be drawn by hand, but today I'll share the secret of how you can still create trendy lettering by customizing ready-made fonts. Begin by opening up a Illustrator and create a new document. I'm using a generic A4 layout but with the document rulers set to pixels and the RGB color mode so we have the brightest colors available. Use the type tool to set out your chosen wording. I'm using the fountain typeface. Font size I'm using 300. Then, to do any necessary kerning adjustments, place the cursor between the letters and use the alt and left or right keyboard keys to adjust the spacing. Go to object, Envelope Distort, Make with Warp. Choose the Rise option with just a 10% amount to give the text more of a dynamic angled layout. Permanently apply this effect by going to Object, Expand, which will convert the original text into outlines. Click the Unite button in the Pathfinder panel to blend all the individual letter shapes into one continuous outline with no overlaps. Go to Object Path Offset Path and enter 10px. Use the Unite button again to merge all the new shapes into one outline. Offset paths are grouped with the original shape, but at the moment only the offset path is selected since it has just been made. Go to Edit, Cut, followed by Edit, Paste In, back to separate it and place it behind the original text. Select the original, inner text outline and give it a white fill. Go to Edit, paste and back again to place another copy of the outer path. Then hold the Shift key and nudge it down and right to create an offset shadow effect. Hold Shift to add the original outer shape to the selection. Then go to Object, Blend, Make. Head straight back to Object, Blend, Blend Options. Change the spacing to specified steps and use a high number like 100 so the blend effectively looks like a smooth line. Go to Object, expand to permanently apply this blend effect, which will convert it into 100 individual shapes. Merge them all into one much simpler outline using the Unite button in the Pathfinder panel. Any leftover gaps can be deleted by selecting the path with the Direct Selection tool. Select the white filled shape and give it a gradient fill instead. Set it up with some nice vibrant colors like a hot pink to orangey yellow. I'm using RGB values of 255, 195, 0 and 255, 0, 1, 1125. Adjust the gradient angle with the gradient tool. Click and drag across the text. Change the fill color of the offset shadow shape too. I'm using a darker purple color of 35, 0, 55. Copy and paste in front a duplicate main text, then change the fill to a nice light purple of 1559, 143. Nudge this purple shape down and right. I counted eight times. Select the gradient filled text and go to Object, Path, Offset Path. Enter 8px. Once again, cut the shape to separate it from the original text, then paste in front. Unite it with the Pathfinder to merge all the shapes into one. We're going to use this shape as a tool to punch out its outline from the purple shape, but if you try doing it without first completing an important step, it doesn't quite work right. That important step is to first convert each component into a compound path by selecting each one individually and going to Object, Compound Path, Make. Then, if you select both shapes and use the minus front button in the Pathfinder panel, the temporary offset path shape will remove the area of the purple shape wherever the two overlapped. Any tiny parts can be cleaned up by deleting them with the Direct Selection tool. Next, we're going to create a custom brush, which we'll use to draw some highlights. Draw a small circle on the artboard, then use the Direct Selection tool and extend the two side points to make a tapered shape. Click the New Brush icon in the Brushes panel, 
and choose New Art Brush. Under the Method dropdown, choose Tints, which will allow the color of the brush stroke to be changed. Delete that temporary brush shape. Then grab the pen tool and click and drag two points to create a curve that follows the outline of one of the letters. Make sure the path has no fill, but has a white stroke applied. Click the custom brush we created to see the tapered line effect. You can alter the size of this tapered shape by adjusting the stroke weight. Continue drawing other short, curved lines elsewhere within the letter shapes to act as small highlights. Follow a simple pattern, like placing them all towards the upper left of the shape, since the shadow is falling to the bottom right. Once you've dragged out a path, hold the Command or Control key and click some empty artboard space to deselect and be able to start a new, separate path. After drawing your last highlight, go to Select Same Stroke Color to be able to apply the tapered brush stroke. Under the Transparency tab, change the Blend Mode to Hard Light and set the Opacity to 70%. This same technique can be used to draw shadows too. Add a series of short curved paths, but this time towards the bottom right of the letter shapes. Give these paths the dark purple color for their stroke by sampling it with the eyedropper tool. Hold Shift to sample just the color not replicate that shape's appearance with the purple as a fill. Set these shapes to hard light too, but at 50% opacity, so the color interacts with the pink to yellow of the gradient. Draw a rectangle that covers the entire artboard. Then right-click and choose Arrange, Send to Back. I drop a new fill color by sampling a hue from the type design. To avoid accidentally moving this large background shape, go to Object Lock Selection. There's one more simple little technique that can really enhance your vector artwork. That's to just add some little details here and there. It could be paint drips, stars, or even something as basic as a few small circles. Hold the Alt key and drag copies of your shapes to quickly add little decorative touches around your type artwork. You can even replicate the white fill with hard light blend mode to add some highlight shapes inside the text outline. So I hope these tips and tricks help you create some cool custom type art of your own. It just goes to show that you don't need to be a hand lettering master to be able to create nice typographic designs. If you are a whiz at illustrating your own script text, the same vector shading techniques can be applied to your artwork once it has been traced to give it more impact with vibrant colors. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, if you have learned anything from this tutorial, please hit like and do subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.